the Indo-German urban Mela is the centerpiece of the Year of Germany in India. It has been conceptualized by the internationally renowned German artist Marcus Heinsdorf. The Mela will have 12 to 16 pavilions shaped like gems and will incorporate the best of Indo-German innovation and design. The rich Indian culture inspired me to design the pavilions in the shape of gemstones. Gemstones are part of the nature and a symbol of richness of culture. The facets of the gemstone show beautiful light effects and this is a new design for fabric architecture. India is a leading producer of textile. I use textile as another symbol for India. It was also used as a designed for lightweight mobile structure in a new high-tech way. For this we use German engineering and expertise. I think textile architecture can be a revolution for the future. And I hope I can open the discussion for this theme. The site is selected by a special team and possession is taken over a month prior to the urban Mela. Selecting a site for the Mela was really, really a crucial process for us because it has many factors behind it which makes a basis for selecting a site. The very first thing was the terrain of the site. The site has to be leveled in a way because the pavilion has to be leveled. Another important thing um, is the accessibility to the site. The site must be in the center of the city. It must be accessible to the common visitors who are coming. And most important factor that we feel to facilitate our visitors is the parking lot. There has to be a minimum good amount of parking lot available so that we can facilitate our visitors and more footfalls we can gain out when we are offering a parking space to a visitor. 50 workers excluding the interior team will work for 25 days putting in 14 hours each day to finish the construction. The team is further split into three groups of construction, membrane and flooring team. Engineers finalize the site layout. About 16 trucks bring the material for the pavilions to be constructed and unpacking follows. This is the first day of our mapping phase and we all are here to do the marking of the pavilions. We have a site layout, we'll do it accordingly. And within 20 days, we'll transform this empty ground into beautiful urban villa site. The construction begins with the basic foundation. The entry and exit points of the pavilions are marked. These are used as reference for the rest of the construction. Then, the remaining foot points are marked and the ground is leveled to bring the entire structure at a uniform height. The number of columns for every pavilion varies between 10 and 36, depending on the type. As the columns get erected, they are held together with horizontal and diagonal steel members. In no time, the basic structure is erected. Earth nails are then hammered. In places where earth nails do not reach optimum depth, they are removed. The earth underneath is drilled and earth nails are once again hammered in. Roofing of the structure begins with the roof truss and flying mast or central column being placed on top. It is crucial to check that the central column is absolutely straight. Additional cables are installed to give the structure better strength and stability. This is followed by installation of compression rings. These rings give further stability and shape to the structure. Interestingly, these rings are the heaviest components of the pavilions and also the most time consuming to install. The idea of the design is to do something in a form of lightweight uh, structure for heavy monsoon, for heavy wind and do it very in a strong way, the structure lightweight and strong. Do it also in a way for quick assembling and dismantling. The inner space is column free, so optimize 
using for exhibition uh, the, the whole pavilion, the whole structure. The entire team comes together to install the roof membrane. The membrane is spread out on the ground and ropes are fastened. These ropes are flung on to the other side of the structure. The loose ends of the ropes are pulled by the team together to get the membrane on the roof. This is no easy task. The team pulls up tremendous weight as the bigger pavilions require more than 150 square meters of membrane. The fabric is then tightened by attaching it to the roof structure with belts and ratchets. The floor is essentially a grid made of steel and wood, which makes it easier to assemble and dismantle. This jigsaw kind of a frame fits in compactly into the steel structure of the pavilion. It is then covered with plywood. Just like the roof membrane, the team opens up the fabric for the external facades. Steel pipes are put through the loops and belts are attached. Then the team brings the membrane up and attaches it to the topmost structure. The entire team pushes the membrane from the inside to get it in its exact position. A tension is created through the ratchets to give the fabric a smooth, wrinkle-free look. Here we have the plastic coated membranes from all the facades. Here is a double ball. It's tailored in India. It's available in India. It's not so high price. It's long life. And the most important point, it's recyclable. The open places, the one idea is behind weaving to show the symbol of textile. The other one is to cool it in a natural way as a climate design. So the wind can go in in a natural way and cools the inner wall like the traditional buildings. The highlight of the urban Mela is the way the pavilions are lit up. Each pavilion has its own light design. Huge cables are laid on the periphery of the site. Position for the distribution boxes are finalized depending on the site layout and aesthetics. These boxes are connected to the main line. Lights are installed in the pavilions and the web of wires is brought to one place. The pavilion is finally connected to the distribution box. Lastly, cable protectors are laid. It is the 24th day of mantling state and uh, we have already completed all the pavilions. Individual teams have arrived for interior, interior works and uh, I guess in next 3-4 days we will complete all our cleaning and we make this entire site ready for a big opening. Each pavilion comes to life with the interior decor. The partners play an important role in deciding the look of the pavilions. With a little carpentry, paint jobs and finishing touches, the pavilion gets ready for the show. The pavilions are washed and cleaned up to bring out the best of textile colors and light effects. On the eve of the opening, the site gets its finishing touches. The Mela is very important for me. It's opened the discussion about fabric architecture. This is a very huge possibility to create low-cost houses with high-tech construction 
but also in India and worldwide is, is a complete new scene. The month-long construction process culminates into a never-seen-before Indo-German urban mela. 